All procedures have changed when it comes to time in my testing. Some I'll discuss implant selection, extraction, extraction immediate placement, and immediate loading. I have the advantage of three-dimensional models. You, you may have it as well. An animation to look at the defects, look <clears throat> at the sites that you reconstruct. And I always practiced grafting over roots. So I have basically an extra bone bank over hopeless teeth. Let's look at some of them. Let's look at extraction, immediate placement, and loading. Um, my point is speed is not equal to success. I have no doubt about the data that Dr. Langer showed with regards to very similar numbers if you extract an immediate place or sometimes the immediate load. The challenge for me is only one thing. What's the final result long term aesthetically later? So if I can get a better aesthetic result long term and a better effective length of the implant long term as multiple steps, I'll decide for two steps. If I feel that I'll have similar results, I may extract and place and may even load at the same time. So a typical example is this patient. 10 is missing, 11 is a 270 degree bone around it. Implant would be placed at 10 and 11. Why would it be placed immediately upon extraction? Because I have favorable interceptor bone, mesial to the bi and distal to number 10. The implants are placed, the bone graft, autogenous and allograft placed and stabilized with a titanium mesh. Primary closure is always practiced. The area is uncovered six months later. The mesh will be removed. The entire convexity is established. You have the, you have the final restoration, the final results few years later. Why I did that is I thought I can get the same results extracting and placement because I have favorable blood supply of 270 degrees and favorable position of intraceptal bone so that Delay placement or immediate placement would be the same. The same situation is here. This patient presents with a completely edentulous maxilla and hopeless mandible. I have <coughs> absolutely no, con very wide ridge, as you can see on a planning. And therefore, if I have wide bone, I will have absolutely no hesitation of extraction and immediate placement. This is performed according to the initial planning. The same in the maxilla, there will be the placement and the immediate loading of the case, as you can see it here. We have crossed out stabilization, you can immediately load it. Six months later, radiographs and the final reconstruction. So I had white bone, I got my 40 Newton centimeter, I can load them even upon extraction. What about three models, three dimensional models? Well, they help me a lot because I can see the defects in advance and I can see how much reconstruction is needed. I can see how much tissue advance, advancement is needed so I can work with that. So here are some examples of defects that we have to deal with. All you need to do is send the DICOM file and they create you the model. When you look at this patient, it becomes clear that he will be or she will be a candidate for cortical cancellous graft, not for a cranial graft, because you can't bend the bone over this type of a defect. In anterior maxilla here, you can choose particular bone or you, or you can use cortical cancellous graft because you can bend it over between 6 to 11. Similar here. In this kind of a situation of completely edentulous patient, of course, you can go for a selection of four and six implants and a prosthetic reconstruction. But you can also attempt to reconstruct it in three dimension with cortical cancellous grafting. The selection, the volume, and the amount of bone needed, it's easier to discern once you look at those models. What about grafting over roots? I like to do it because in most of our patients that we reconstruct in three dimension, I keep hopeless teeth to support the provisional restoration, such as here. 
<coughs> the whole maxilla, upper left maxilla, will be reconstructed, but I want to keep the bicuspid to support my fixed provisional restoration. So a window is open. We use here iliac crest because we also reconstructed the whole facial aspect. Sorry, that's a cranial bone. Um, that we wanted to reconstruct the whole dimension of the facial aspect of the, um, of the maxilla. And we delay placement. So first, it's reconstructed. And then the implants are placed. And once the implants are placed, that hopeless tooth is being removed. The only challenge here, and it's kind of nice to challenge your technique, is that when you dissect membranes over the roots, you will affect the vascularity. And you can devitalize the teeth. So when we do those procedures, we routinely check vitality of those teeth throughout the healing period. 